Okay, so we're locally recording now. Um, why don't you give me a background on your play um, as a Dota player? So, like, um, were you how long you've been playing? Like, what you calibrated at? Things like that. Um, I think I calibrated at uh, 15. Um, I started playing maybe a year and a half, two years ago. But okay. I was uh, I was at 15. Uh, I managed to get up to uh, where I am now, 2.5, 2.7, depending on the week, I guess. And it's, it's just been crazy stagnant. Um, mm -hmm. I never went with the support my way up route. I've kind mm -hmm. of been just trying to carry my way up. That's fine. You can and do that, too. Yeah, for the most part, I mean... Um, I remember a couple of patches ago, this was maybe last year, mm -hmm. it was Ricky spamming, just nonstop, and then it turned into PA spamming, and now it's into Spectre spamming. So that that's kind of, I feel like that's where I'm falling short, because I'm spamming one hero and not getting the, uh, I guess, the groundwork laid out for how to play properly, if I was ever, like, um, blocked off from that hero. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and there's a couple other issues that you'll encounter. First of all, like, every game is going to be a little different in terms of what's the best hero, and, I mean, there's lots of ways to raise your MMR, and I guarantee that just by diversifying a little bit and always picking the hero at the right situation that it would give you a higher win rate. But the reality is that probably won't raise your MMR by more than 15% or something, so, like, it could get you to 3k. But is that really worth it compared to becoming a better Dota player and hitting 4k? You know, right, so. exactly. I, I feel like my problem is, um, and what I've seen just going through my, uh, my played games lists, um... If I'm play, playing Spectre, I have around, I, I think, 80% win rate with him with mm -hmm. over 150 games logged in. Yeah. So for that, that's okay. But then it's it's when I start diversifying and then moving on to, let's say, a Void or a Sniper or a, or a Slark. That's when I go into like these five, six game slides. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Um, Have you ever played Clash Royale, the mobile game? Yeah, yeah, I've played that. Yeah, it's so, uh, the way that I look at what you just explained is the same. So I could play my deck that I think is the best and have my highest crowns or MMR, but then when I feel like trying something else or I change up my deck, then I lose MMR, and that's really frustrating because you're losing games and you have to win them back. Right, so you feel like you're, you're, you're almost moving backwards. Exactly, so it's just a pain in the ass, right? So if you ever yeah. want to diversify, then you feel in this rut like this is the only way you can win, you want to win, so you're going to pick the same hero again, and then you stop having fun playing Dota, basically. So I, I definitely agree that you should diversify, not only for learning practices, but also just because it'll make you uh, probably have more fun in every game, and then whenever they hard pick, hard counter you, then you can just deal with that in other ways. So this right. game, you're against a Sven Marana Anti Mage Legion Witch Doctor. I'd say Spectre is kind of okay this game. Good against Witch Doctor. Good against Anti Mage. Um, I wouldn't say it's good against Sven. Um, I would say it's good against Marana. So it's like it's pretty good. It can be good against. I, Legion. I think Sven was the issue this game. Like he he melted the hell out of most of our our team fight. Uh, most of our heroes before we even got heavy into the team fight. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. He's yeah, so. definitely a good hero. Looks like he has pretty incredible farm rate this game. And your farm is pretty slow. 180 CS for a... How oh, many minute game? A 30, 40 minute game? That's pretty slow. Yeah, I got zoned out um, pretty early, if I remember correctly. Oh, you had there was like a dual lane or something like that? Yeah, it was, it was a duel. It, okay. it, everybody's still running duels because this is still you know sub 3k. Yeah, so it's good, still 2-1-2s. Two yeah, that makes perfect sense. Okay, uh, I am sharing my screen now. Uh, let me okay. know if you can't see. But... Yep, I got it right here. Okay, and again, the, the FPS is going to be pretty low, but it's enough to watch, I think. And I, I need to find some other software that has faster FPS, but mm -hmm. don't do live coaching as much as I used to. So um, why don't you, uh, you can either just watch my screen or we can watch at the same time. Might be better just to watch my screen, but... Cause I'll probably I'll just watch your screen, I don't mind. Okay, yeah. I'll probably FPS. poke through at random, random intervals. So first thing we'll talk about is starting item build. Um, I just maybe wait to skill point. Almost always you're going to want spectral, spectral Dagger, but it's safer in a lot of ways just to delay this until... I mean, what if you're trading level 1 with somebody that's warding and you want desolate damage or something, you know? Right, yeah, it's just a, a, a real bad habit I have from just taking Dagger at first. Yeah, yeah, just the same principle for all heroes. Um, you did buy Quelling, but then you sold it and bought a Stout. I think that's the, the right move here um, to get Stout Shield for sure. Although I would maybe consider getting something like... Uh, another iron, iron node branch or two or you could buy maybe a fairy fire or clarity potion is not bad i get that you'll get to your next items faster but it also guarantees that if your early game is a little bit weak that you'll be able to make up for it or your, what a lot of specter players do from what i've seen is actually grab more sets of tango than just two and a cell or then one in a cell they might go like two tangos with a stout shield with a couple iron wood branches or mm -hmm. you could go two sets of tangos with a salve and then you have like a stupid amount of regen which would right. delay your quelling blade, but if you have a hard lane, then it would be offset. So if they're aggro try you, which is kind of what it looks like, then you have so much regen that you can offset this. Right. Well, my whole my whole mentality going into this is I know I'm getting 
probably zoned out early game. Uh -huh. So I want to just rush onto the Vanguard and just max my uh, my E. Okay, I get that, but that's that's a mid game solution to a laning stage problem, and that's not really the right thing to do, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because it's more about making sure that your laning stage goes as good as it possibly can, and then transition that into your mid game item decision making. Because Vanguard is a two thousand gold item, it's going to be a very long time. Did he like actually block you in with a Ironwood branch? That was interesting. Oh, you should have eaten yeah. this tree, by the way, because it's a it's a tango tree, so it would have given you uh -huh. double the tango value. That would have been cool. This uh, is already a very fucked game. <laughs> yeah, it, like, it, it, was, it was pretty bad. So here's another example of an item you could have. If you had a mango right now, you could uh -huh. pop the mango, get full mana, throw a spectral dagger, slow this guy a little bit, possibly probably kill him, honestly. Maybe. Would have been close. Yeah, but I think you could situation. have killed him if you had a mango. But you didn't have a mango, so then you end up taking a bunch of damage. It could have been first blood going to you. Like Little things like that could make differences. Or maybe if you... I don't know if there was something else you could have maybe had like... Even like a Slippers of Agility. Uh, yeah, you could have bought that, I guess, because you could have gone, oh, you want Vanguard, that's right, so you don't want to make poor mans. But, you know, all these little things can make the difference and be be the, the ultimate solution that you want. Um, first mistake that I just saw, other than all that early stuff, is that you backed away from the creep wave a little bit too far here. So you came mm -hmm. down, which is fine. But now the important thing is just get as many last sets as possible. And you ran all the way over here to eat a tree, you could have ran to here to get a tree, and now it takes you longer to run back to the creep wave. So try to stand around where the creep wave is. Okay. Um, you did ultimately miss that last hit, but same principle here. You ran back again, you got scared, you're not looking at their heroes, you're not clicking on their items, you're not seeing what their regen is. If you look at Witch Doctor here, he's only got one Tango, he's got mm -hmm. a Clarity, and he has a Gauntlet and a Mantle. This is terrible items for support, he's already been too expensive, uh, spent mm -hmm. way too much on stats. He could have bought three Ironwood Branches for the same cost as one of these, and had three Agility on top of this, and saved 150 gold. Like. So you can look at this, these things and say like, oh, he's only got one Tango. That means he's already at half HP. He's only got one Tango left. He's already screwed. Like he's already way out of regen. And you can do the same for Sven. Click on Sven, see what he has. He's only got a Quelling Blade and a single Tango. So he doesn't have that much mana. So even if he nukes you right here, if you trade it for like a Salve or something, it's not a terrible trade because then he's completely out of mana for the whole laning stage. Like things right. like that are things that you can exploit. So always click was, on your opponents. I was just a little afraid of moving up too far into the wave and getting double stunned. Because if they combo the stun there, I'm pretty much dead. Because Io over um, here can't really... You're not dead. You're definitely not dead. Um, you got to remember that, uh, especially if you use a dagger, they're going to be slower than you. Witch Doctor can right-click you a lot, and he's got pretty good base damage, and Sven has good base damage, but that's still a melee hero. And again, you didn't click on him. You didn't see what items he had. He has nothing. If he has like an Orb of Venom or like a Boots first, yeah, that's pretty scary. And he would do a lot of damage. But you don't even know that. You're just kind of making assumptions. And Dota's a lot about taking information you know and applying it in a good way. Because it's already one minute in here. And you haven't gotten any last hits, and you're a carry. And you've had opportunities, and you're just you're just playing too scared, honestly. You can definitely play a little aggressive here, especially mm -hmm. as soon as you solve the IO. Like, what should be happening is you should be standing here, contesting last hits, and IO should be trading hits with the Witch Doctor, and you guys are going to do this, like, dance where you play between you last hitting, Sven last hitting, and IO and Witch Doctor right-clicking each other, and maybe at some point they have an opportunity. And their lane is definitely scarier because they have disables, and you just have an IO with a Hedra Cell level 1. But... You could have you could have had first blood. You could have probably three last hits right now. If you have three more last hits, you've got boots of speed. You could have bought boots of speed while having yourself. Mm -hmm. And with your first blood on top of it, you'd already be at like eight hundred gold, and everything would change. But you're you're basically gimping yourself already because you're scared. And right there, you wasted your mana now. And now you have no more mana left. So now you don't even have the ability to actually get yourself out of danger. So you're not utilizing your mana in the right way, and you're not utilizing and you're not reading the laning stage at all. So you have to you have to understand exactly what the limitations of heroes are. And yes, they have a really scary dual lane, but you can definitely get more than zero last sets. You are not completely zoned here. Okay. Like the, the worst thing you can do as a player is just accept that you're only gonna get experience and nothing else. That's not that's not okay. That's not good enough. Um I'd also consider maybe not getting dispersion level one. I think it's pretty bad. Just because it does reflect ten percent damage, but mm -hmm. It's not very much. The, the amount of HP that would reflect for your whole HP is like 60. So one skill point in this would only give you like 60 HP. Which right, is so not viable. This it's, really. it's really not good. For the entirety of your HP, you'd reflect 60 pure damage or 60 damage or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you'd have 60 more HP. It's really not worth it. I think Desolate's better. That way, okay. if you are trading with heroes, you're going to do lots of damage. And if you get into a situation where you're last hitting a creep by itself, then you will get more gold. Okay. So, um, major issues, you're also missing last hits. You missed at least, like, two there that I think you could have gotten. Got that one at least. Um, you've got enough for boots here, which I think I would buy if I were you. 
Although I still think you're you're behind the farm that you should be. That was well done by the Witch Doctor there. You definitely made a mistake. And now you're kind of in a bad spot for sure. Because you've lost a lot of HP. But it's not just because the lane is hard. It's also because you haven't gotten the last hits earlier. Right. And if you had if you had the first four last hits and you had that first blood, you'd be in a much better position than you are now. So because it's like this problem where players play too safe always. They they get they get a couple bad games in where they feed too much and then they start playing safe always. And when you always play safe, you never get advantage. Mm -hmm. So you're always in this mediocrity where you're like, well, they could kill me, but you're not actually trying to kill them and figuring out how to outplay them and figuring out what your limits are. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's good to play stupid because then you understand what you did that was stupid, assuming you can figure it out afterwards. Then it's right. good. And again, the the problem here was just that the laning stage has been a little bit weak. Um, and yeah, you really can't c even go for last hits at this point. And you gave the salve to the IO. Honestly, I would have even consider just telling him to go back and heal. Like, click on his items, be like, this guy's a freaking headdress at level 1. This is stupid. Why would I give him that salve that's going to help me heal? Because now you just can't even last hit anymore. And you feel justified in getting levels in dispersion. You're getting farther behind because you were scared at first. And you gave a salve to a dumbass. And now you have no tangles left over. And you're saving up for a fast ring of health, which re in reality isn't going to even sur keep you that survived. You're like prioritizing almost entirely on being behind. Like when you talked about getting the Vanguard Rush, it's because mm -hmm. you always feel behind. And here's the last hit that you would have had, by the way, if you had Desolate. You could have right. gotten this last hit. Yeah. So you've got all these points into a skill that's actually not doing anything for you, really. It's only giving you like 90 HP or something like that right now. Mm -hmm. And rather than um, getting last hits again, you're you're looking at possibly fighting in the jungle. Instead, you could just start last hitting. This guy's not that far ahead of you. He's only got brown boots and not enough mana for a stun. So at this point, you can easily last hit, and you're still playing scared. A witch doctor is not even here anymore, and you're still being afraid to get last hits. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand those limitations. Otherwise, you're just gimping yourself. Right, um, it's a little too passive. Oh, it's it's. I wouldn't say a little. It's way too passive. You're playing okay. way too passive. It's not even close right now. Um, you're not pushing your limits, and now because you played scared the whole time, you're now out of regen because you gave them too many opportunities to eventually last hit or harass you. Because mm -hmm. if you look at net worth, they're they're far ahead of you. You've only got a thousand; they've got like 300, 400 ahead of you. Uh, which doctor is about the same as you, which shouldn't happen. You should never be the lowest net worth. Um, sometimes lanes are hard, but you have to basically occasionally go in for a last hit and play around that kind of. So you're already basically gimped by this moment and now again you're using your dagger what's the point is your dagger really is your is your five eight percent slow really going to stop sven from killing the io here when his hp is already this low it's not right. going to he's already dead so because of that you've already you've again wasted 130 mana which you should be using either to get a kill or to escape into trees if you actually do really get in trouble so you're you're basically playing offlane is how you're playing this game and that's not acceptable even if they have a better dual lane because the reality is that if you outplay your opponents you will just be more farmed than them anyways. So you just need to play around that. You need to make sure that you, you play your crappy dual lane the best you can, and you get the most last hits that you can, and it eventually leads you to you, leads to you getting kills on them when they make mistakes. So that's basically how you should play every lane as a carry that is not a good lane. You play conservatively, you have smart item builds, you only use your mana when it's going to give you a huge trade advantage. Do you know what I mean by trade advantage? Yeah. Uh, way more right clicks and damage on them than they get on you. So you're right. super justifying your mana usage. You're getting last hits consistently. Even if you're getting less last hits than them, you're still getting some last hits. And then you wait until you either hit six and you go for a kill on the map or a gank somewhere else. Or you wait until they get out of position and make a mistake and then you go for a kill. And as soon as you get a kill, the whole game changes. You could get back in the game. You're going to match their farm level because of comeback mechanics or you'll catch up massively. And then you can transition into playing a normal Spectre game. But And yeah, so if the laning stage is hard, you have to like take all those disadvantages that you have and work through them until that time period where you can finally start getting kills and winning the game. But okay. definitely definitely don't max your passive first. Um, one, one skill point is fine, but um, any more than this is, is already a bit iffy. And you probably feel comfortable now that you're a ring of health. You're probably thinking like, oh, thank God I can finally play this game normally. But you could have been playing the game normally from the start and then just transition into a fast ring of health, which is would have been a great idea. Like if you... For example, if you kill the Marana using your Mango, um, and you get first blood, you could purchase like Boots of Speed and I don't know, maybe a Magic Stick or something, or maybe like Brown Boots and just start saving for your Ring of Health. And then as soon as you get your Ring of Health, then you've got Boots of Speed, Ring of Health, and Stop Shield. And yeah, they have a stronger dueling, but you've got Ring of Health, so you should be able to offset all their harass. And this dumbass Io who built a Headdress level one is already giving you three HP regen per second. So now. 
you're pretty much set. 10 HP per second. You've got brown boots. You've got a ring of health. You don't have a coiling ability yet, but at least they're not going to out harass you like they did this game. So, right. So that's that's literally all you messed up here. So um, laning stage wise, I think this is a, a good example to start with because you will e encounter a lot of dual lanes. But I don't think this one was. Um, you can easily outplay this. Basically, I, I think you can definitely get around this problem. Definitely practice less hitting. Um, you're you're last seen a little bit weak. Like right here, you already messed up. Okay, you got it because of desolate, but. Um, you know what? You actually did that right because of Desolate. Because if you would have prepped it once, it wouldn't have. It would have died to the tower. And yeah, absolutely never max dispersion. Um, Spectres. The best thing about Spectral Dagger is the interaction with Haunt. As soon as you hit six, you have the potential of doing a 150 damage nuke to somebody on the map. And that's what you need to do. That's what accelerates Spectre into Danger Zone. If you if you just have a decent laning stage on Spectre, and then you look around the map and you see somebody get low, you just steal that kill every fucking time. Because mm -hmm. every time you steal a kill, it accelerates you towards Radiance, and the faster you get your Radiance is the faster you control the game and get more farm and get into an unstoppable area. So by not going for your dagger levels, you're basically consigning yourself to just AFK farming until you make a Vanguard and then get a Radiance or whatever else you build. This game you went Diffusal Manta, I believe, but yeah. I absolutely don't agree with that. I think Radiance is by far the, the best item. The only time that like Diffusal Manta was arguably better was when Tranquil Boots um, could give you that like temporary heal. And during that time period, uh, it also gave like illusions really fast movement speed too, I believe. But yeah, like okay. you, you can't even contribute to your early game right now because your dagger is just level one. Also, you made a mistake here. You should have daggered to the witch doctor, because it would have gone through both. Ah, uh, okay. So okay. always get maximum value out of your skills if possible. And I would so also I cut, the, I cut it short. Yeah, basically you could have had a eight percent slow, eight percent slow on the um the witch on doctor the witch. instead. Yeah, I think he gets away. Oh no, I think blood picks him off here. Yeah. So, and then another mistake that you made is that when you were fighting the Sven, this guy's got cleave damage. So that means if you stand right next to the Bloodseeker, that uh -huh. you're letting him maximize damage on the two of you. So what you could have done instead, actually... Sidestep him a little bit. Exactly. So, because you stood here and you attacked quite a bit. Um, you were obviously stunned for a long period of time here. But I would have thrown the dagger, I would have attacked, and then I would have moved a little bit to the left, like here. Okay. And then I would have attacked him again, and then moved a little bit and attacked again. And then you'd have slow and two people... You'd be able to kill this Witch Doctor easily. You wouldn't have gotten trapped on the cliff because the dagger would have been on him, which would have allowed you to escape. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have had to waste as much mana to get out. And then you would have been in a better position. So basically what just happened there was the moment I was talking about. Wait until they make a mistake, get kills, and now you're back in the game. And that's where you are, are right now. Your net worth is now middle of the pack. You are actually above the Sven despite him getting way more last hits. Um, actually, looking like that. He just last hit poorly. He should be way ahead of you. But right. he made mistakes because he's a 2k player, just like you. The difference mm -hmm. is that he feels more comfortable laning is all. And also because you wasted a lot of Spectral Dagger mana, now you can't do Haunt and Spectral Dagger, which again limits your ability to gank in the mid game. So some things you can do, some items you can buy that will accelerate this or reduce this problem in the early game is you can buy like a Raindrop is really, really good on a hero like Spectre. Increases your survivability, gives you the possibility of um, just more mana pool so that you can always do more Haunt Daggers. And similar problem, you're again, you're not last hitting very well. So yeah, you've got a Vanguard right now and you're really tanky, but you don't have boots. And again, you, you did the same thing. As soon as you see danger, you're throwing out Spectral Dagger. That's not worth it. All right, I should have used it to get away as opposed to trying to help that situation. Yeah, or what you could have just done is um, just not used it or just walked away. And right. yeah, you had a Vanguard here but, and you had three points in Dispersion, but you still died because you don't have boots to speed. And if you just had boots to speed there, you probably could have lived, honestly. These guys have, well, except the exception of this shit Witch Doctor build, these guys have much more efficient item builds than you do. Like, you can't you can't just not have boots of speed, honestly. You easily would have lived there if you uh, if you had boots. So, and now you lose your tower, which means now you don't have a very safe place to farm as a carry, which is really bad. Um, looks like you are going to be able to kill Witch Doctor, but that was a little bit harder than it could have been. Mm -hmm. And you still don't have boots, so... Yeah, you should have minimum, like... Uh, 30 more last hits at this point at the 50 minute mark and yeah it would have been low at the start but it would have gone better even like a pudge is outlast hitting you um, so you're definitely missing a coin blade is the other thing especially when you go this vanguard build your farm rate is going to be really slow mm -hmm. so it's really important that you get a coin blade that way even if you're like afk jungly neutrals that you still kill creeps relatively fast that part's pretty huge so coin blade is absolutely mandatory Looks like you got another dispersion level, which again is not very good. And similar problem here, you're trying to deal some damage to Witch Doctor, but he's only slowed by 8%, that doesn't do anything. Right. If you have 4 in Dagger there, and you have like 4 points in Dagger, 1 point in Desolate, 1 point in Dispersion, then it becomes a lot more effective. 
So the only reason you're getting pressured so hard is just because you lost the laning stage too hard. If you had better skill builds and better items at this point, you'd be able to control your, your destiny pretty much. So You're still missing last hits and there's nobody around. That, that can't happen. Um, I just recommend practicing last hitting. Just go into a custom game by yourself and just practice last hitting with no items on Spectre kind of a thing. Just okay. practice it. Uh, don't don't get skill points either. That would make it even harder. Um, you can do things like push the creep wave and then try to last hit under the creep wave, or you can spawn like a, a second hero using commands and then practice last hitting under a tower. But practicing all that stuff is is really good. And here you are, like again, like they're just pressuring your lane really hard. You lost your laning stage. Your tower is dead. So now you don't even feel safe farming here, which is true. You really shouldn't feel safe farming here. Oh, and you canceled your TP because your team was here. I see. That makes sense. Yeah, I was going to TP out, but then I saw them rotate over, and I thought that might have been a, a good point where I should turn and maybe try to help something. Yeah, I think this was overall good. Um, if you had something like an Aquila, if your phase boots were done already, this could have made a huge difference, actually. And your team is still fighting really well, but imagine if you had more items here. If you had, like, phase boots and an Aquila at 13 right. minutes, you definitely could if your early game went just a little bit better. And then you'd just be wrecking this whole fight. You could even buy like an Orb of Venom or something and then mm -hmm. chase people down repeatedly. Get a magic stick at least maybe. That way every time somebody casts 10 spells you get another free spectral dagger. Um, your skill build again is wrong. Um, you're, you're basically doing the reverse skill operation. Yeah, you actually are. You're going completely backwards. Max dagger, get one desolate, one dispersion. Max one dispersion early. And then max out desolate afterwards because that'll be your haunt damage. All your illusions will do haunt damage. That'll be you farming a single creep. That'll be you chasing down a witch doctor solo. He'll be maximum slowed. He'll be taking as much pure damage as possible. I, I think my problem with spec from from what I'm seeing now is mm -hmm. um, I, I've been getting too comfortable playing him in one particular style and not getting getting more versatile with him. Like, um, what would you say my, by style? Like, what about the style as your safety zone? Um, the way I feel comfortable playing spec is just basically AFK farming until I pick up my defusal and then just going for haunt pickoffs. And the way that I can farm more comfortably is with, um, I, I only take one point in dagger because I don't feel like I need that to farm at all. Uh -huh. I take the most in desolate, uh, I mean dispersal, because um, that paired with the vanguard, that is basically, you know, no damage from any creep wave coming up. So if I get a chance at a creep wave, I can basically tank the entire wave without taking damage. Well, you can do that. Hit. You can do that with vanguard alone. Vanguard already blocks 32 melee. The, which is right, everything. I'm saying if there's like let, let's say there's another hero and I'm getting poked at I, I don't know I'm trying to justify the fact that I see um the, the the problem is that the the difference between just one point in dispersion and four points is not very much like you're putting three extra skill points into a skill that only barely more than doubles in value it's like a 120 percent damage increase or effectiveness increase for three skill points right so, so you, you got to think about the math and how much extra value you're getting per skill point this this skill is really good late game when you have a lot of HP it's right. not very good early when you don't have that much HP. And yeah, you've got a Vanguard already, but you're putting way too much... Think of your early resources in these ways. that You have time, you have gold, and you have experience, which means skill points. And you're putting everything in defense. You're putting everything you have into defense. But that's, And you do need some, but arguably the, the best balance is to putting just enough defense where you never die mm -hmm. and just enough offense that allows you to get kills. Or you can go full glass cannon, and you can just not build Vanguard at all and get a faster Radiance, which lets you farm, which lets you get free kills with Haunt, and then you transition that into a faster heart afterwards, and finally you're tanky. So it's right. like, you don't have to go this like full defensive, play safe way that you're doing right now. Your KDA looks good, 2, 1, and 4, but your CS is stupidly low. You've only got 44 at 15 right. minutes. You should have 50 at 10 minutes minimum, pretty much, if you're in a duel versus dual lane, in my opinion. Um, and... You should definitely, you could have like Vanguard, Phase, Aquila, plus like a thousand gold right now with as much action as there has been. And and you got, like you said before, you don't get Spectral Dagger because you feel like it doesn't help you farm. It is a terrible farming skill, but what it does is lets you kill heroes. And that's where Spectre is good. I, I'm sure I have a couple of videos of that where I'll play Spectre Carry, and as soon as I hit six, I haunt and dagger kill people repeatedly, and then I go back to farming. And then I haunt and dagger people again, and then go back to farming. And I do that like four to five times in the early game while farming at a rapid rate and then you get a radiance and then it's like 20 minutes and you have mm -hmm. like radiance with an uh with a um with a vanguard or something yeah at that point you're just snowballing the rest of the game and then it's just over because like you farm faster than them you team fight better than them you gank better than them you do everything better than them the only hard part is the laning stage right. so you're not going from the laning stage into the mid game not nearly fast enough and everything you're doing is just to survive so you're missing your timing window even if you're doing it 
as tanky as possible the reality is you could get ahead like right there you could have been you could have had that witch doctor kill or you could have at least had the, the area experience which gives you advantage um, you could have a quelling blade for example that increases your damage against neutrals by like 30 percent that's better than a blade of alacrity like every time you neutral you should have a you should have a quelling and occasionally i'll i'll break that rule and not do it myself but that's just because i'm like stubborn sometimes is all mm -hmm. And never miss last hits, obviously, especially when you're passive farming. And you're looking at all these fights, and you know that you can't do anything, really. And that's because you only have one point in dagger. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where I can be effective if I do haunt in. But I, I didn't see a, an optimal situation for me to jump in, so I didn't bother. Like, if you had two points in dagger, I guarantee you get this kill. But you're probably not going to. Yeah, and you lose the kill. Yeah. Like if, But if you slowed by... 20% and you were buffed by another another 12% movement speed there like mm -hmm. you definitely could have killed that guy uh, let's, Let me just go back and check his, his overall HP when you hunted in This is right before the dagger hits I think so he has 253 HP all he has is he has helm he could maybe outplay you here probably not but Like that would have done 150 damage he would have been down to 100 HP and then one desolate hit with one right click He probably just dies right there I think, and yeah. with the extra movement speed and with the phase, you probably can catch up to him, really. You could easily catch up to him under tower. I guess he would have Warcry, but I'm, I'm quite sure you could have killed this guy. He's second highest net worth in the whole game. You would have gotten like 600 gold from that, probably. Mm -hmm. And then you could have just TP'd back just like you did. So you're, you're losing these kind of opportunities due to your skill build, and you're probably not realizing, you're just thinking, ah, oh, whatever, I'm doing everything right. But that's the most important thing to do as a Dota player is think like, okay, I think I played that circumstance as good as I could, but was there something other than something that I could have done earlier that would have affected that and made that more likely for me to do well? And the reality is your skill build and your early game and your item build all mm -hmm. could have been different, which would have led to that moment in the game would have been the easiest kill of your life. Or you could have even haunted in, killed him, and then relocated somewhere else and killed somebody else, like if you were far enough ahead. Right, so the illusion would have just done it. Exactly, so that's why looking at the early game is so important and why, frankly, looking at more of this game isn't really that worth it. Um, I, I don't think Diffusal Blade is a good item build uh, first. I think uh, Radiance is the way to go. You can get Vanguard early, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. A lot of Spectres like going Urn. That way, if they're part of a kill, they get 150 pure damage for the next gank that they put somewhere on the map. Mm -hmm. So Urn is really good as well. It can be a, a different build if you want it. Um, I'm cool with you going Vanguard if you're against dual lanes all the time. I think that's completely reasonable. That's every 2k match I've ever been in. Exactly. I got, I got a tri lane the other day, and yeah. we just destroyed. You destroyed them? No, 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 no. It was a tri lane. Oh, I was okay. playing um, a sniper. It was a sniper and jug top. And it was a Marana Ugh. tide and I forget who else tri lane top. And yeah, we went full feed. It sounds difficult by all means, but there's things you can do. Like one of you, for example, even in this lane, what the IO could have done instead is he could have just started pulling instead. Like stack small camp once, mm -hmm. go back and start the pull. It'll kill the whole creep wave. And then they get one less wave of experience. And then you keep doing that repeatedly while sit farming under your tower. And then eventually you're just ahead in levels. And then you can take a fight. Like, you can do things like that. That's like, that's the balancer is how much both sides pull. Like, I don't even know if these guys would know how to pull the large camp over. And if they didn't, then you would just constantly get advantage and constantly get advantage and last hit close to your tower every time. And you wouldn't even have to worry about this, like, I feel uncomfortable moving 400 units. If the IO just pulled then everything would be solved. So you can either communicate that to him, be like, hey man, can you go do a pull? Or you can do it yourself, let Io sit there and try to grab last hits and get experience, and you start the pull instead and then pull through. Like, you can basically start as a pseudo Spectre support, kind of, and then transition it later when the lane feels more safe. So there's all these little things that you can do to adjust. Like, Dota is very much a, here's a shitty situation, and what is the best thing that you can do in that moment to get some advantage until you can later wait until they make a mistake and then kill them, and then play a normal game like that's basically every dual lane off lane that you have to lane against as a carry setup every single time do the best you can without dying wait till they fuck up then you kill them and then you kill them like six more times and then you're way ahead game's okay. over that's how you should be looking at it don't don't just like uh, consign yourself to like frustration saying my allies suck I, I know you didn't say that but it's a very very common theme for people that are playing solo queue when their allies are terrible they say my allies are terrible it's not my fault but really there's always more you can do and i guarantee that you could have just stomped this game especially with that first blood into proper laning stage had it had it been better in the beginning yeah exactly so i think um your starting item build definitely depends on the heroes you're against and i, I wouldn't have necessarily expected a dual offlane considering that there was a legion i would have anticipated jungle legion dual offlane top solo offlane but um 
yeah, definitely Stout Shield, Self Tango. I think it's okay not to get Poor Man's if you really don't want to. If it's a dual offlane range, I would get Poor Man's probably. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a good burst of early gold. But um, yeah, Fast Boots, Magic Stick, depending on the lane. And then. Um, yeah, now, now that I'm looking at it with you, the Marana kill in the beginning really might have just snowballed the game for me. Or, or changed it yeah. a little bit. I mean, easily, because then you get Brown Boots. Right. This, this guy didn't even have a Stout Shield, so every time you traded hits with him. If he was solo, then it should be advantageous to you. Yeah. Um, obviously, Witch Doctor being there messed things up, but you definitely could have abused the laning stage a bit more. And that all it takes is a different starting item build, just mm -hmm. a little a little mango. And then if you never use the mango, that's okay because you're still getting one HP regen for like three minutes. That's like 200 HP. That's like two tangos. And then mm -hmm. you can sell it later for 60 gold or um, use it in a in a crucial a crucial moment where you didn't have enough to dagger and haunt. You know, there's right. Like, so it's a free dagger just sitting there. Exactly, um, and it's expensive if you use it early, but in exchange for first blood, completely worth it. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's let's hop into a game then, because um, I, I think uh, this the early game principles is all you all you need to do. You're gonna have you're still gonna be last hitting, lower than I would want you to, but I don't I don't think that's the bigger thing here. That's something you can practice on your own time really easily. But honestly, I do recommend it, even if you spend like thirty minutes, like find a time when when you don't have enough time to play a full game before you have to go to class or whatever, and just practice last hitting for 20 minutes against bots and i guarantee that the next game you play you're gonna be so much better at last hitting it's gonna like blow your blow you away you're gonna be like holy shit i'm actually i'm i'm very clearly better at last hitting than i was a, a moment ago as well, you're, my you're my whole thing with last hitting and i think it's it was from one of your um videos on youtube i, I saw way 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 back mm -hmm. it was um basically try to be at the 50 mark by 10 minutes and that yeah. that's always the benchmark that i i try to set when i'm when i'm playing a spec with, with that said, that's still low. Um, most pro players right now get about 75 to 80 last hits at 10 minutes. Okay. And that does include some neutrals. So back then, 50 seemed kind of reasonable, but as the game develops more and more, everybody gets better and better. At least the best players get better and better and better. So right. 50 is okay. I, I would see that as like bare minimum to not be, to not make fun of yourself, to be like, wow, I really suck this game. But really, it should be at least like 60. I would say 60 is arguably like the new base level that you should have um, mm -hmm. more than 50. But if you're doing really well, it's more like 70. Um, 70 okay. is, your, is your game in offline mode too? Yeah, it is. Steam it just kicked me off. Being yeah, funky. Steam. Uh, well, got the Steam boot. We need to delay this by 10 minutes. No big deal. Uh, I'm going to try restarting Dota. Have you done Radiant Specter before? Yeah, I used right. to play a lot of Radiant Specter, but um, Why did you I change? guess um, I, I switched it over to a, a Vanguard into a Quick Diffusal, because um, I, I guess part of the reason is I don't max out the the dagger. Mm -hmm. So with the Diffusal, it's easier for me to chase down once I haunt and find a solo hero. So you feel like you needed more disable, and you weren't getting that. Yeah, the, I mean, just that slow in in. Um, in pairing with the phase boots, it's usually a guaranteed kill if I if I can pick off a hero solo. Yeah. Okay. Because they can't really trade with me there at that point if it's solo and I'm um, I'm already at the fusel. Yeah. Um. I, I totally get your point. Um. The benefit of the radiance obviously being that it doesn't matter if you're even attacking, they're still taking damage. And right. for any chase hero, being able to do damage just by standing there is so much better, arguably, because even if you only attack like, I don't know, twice or like half the amount that you would with the fusel. At least you're always doing damage, and you can just do you can do a lot more like weaving in and out. Like it, when you haunted it on the specter or the the Sven, if that was later in the game, you would have had radiance at that point. Mm -hmm. He just he just dies simply to dagger and like three ticks of radiance. You don't yeah. even have to attack him. It doesn't matter. He could stun you for four seconds and he would still die because you would haunt in dagger and he would take four seconds. Or you could even just haunt alone, and then your illusions do way more damage with radiance burn. Like the the team fight difference between a ra radiance illusions and a vanguard diffusal is just not even close. It's not even mm -hmm. close to the same. Just so much better, and the farm the farm impact as well is just obscene for radiance in comparison to diffusal manta. That build is just very out of date right now. I think um, it, it can one? be uh, the diffusal manta. It can be good sometimes, but the benefit that you get it from radiance is just so much more right now. I feel okay, and I, I'm, I have a feeling that almost every other high level player does that um i'm gonna check on 
uh, some, something I like doing sometimes, I just go on Dota buff if uh, I want to learn how to play a new hero and or see what people are doing right now in the meta. So mm-hmm. you can just click on that hero and then look at like a trending guide. Here, I'll give you a link here. My Steam isn't opening, it's weird. Yeah, um, I'm going to check the Steam status website to you. Oh, like the app itself isn't opening. It's probably down. Oh, I think it might have just came back up. Um, here's another website that I go to sometimes whenever Steam is acting weird. Steam client connections are down. There will be maintenance on Steam today. There's a real ass possibility that there is Steam maintenance today. Um, mm-hmm. If that's the case and this is down for an hour, we can just reconvene in a bit, like when it comes back up. Um, and then we can do that normal game. Okay. Do you want to take, like, um, what time is it over by you? Uh, 4 p.m. 4? Um, okay, West so, um, yeah, I'm in, I'm in the east, so it's 7. Do you want to just hop back on around, uh, 4.30? My 7.30? Um, okay, yeah, in 30 minutes. Well, it'll probably be open then. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, right, we'll cool. just reconvene so, in 30. Uh, I'll hit you back up in about half an hour. Okay, sounds great. See you then. You got it. Talk to you then. Yeah. It always happens for like a, a meta hero like that, that everybody thinks is OP. Like nobody knows how to play against them for a while. Mm-hmm. So it becomes difficult, but then everybody kind of learns in it. Yeah, then everybody the same... counters that, that specific. Yeah, exactly. They they run into his like abilities more often and mm-hmm. crap like that. Looks like you play a lot of Slark too. I try to, but uh, my problem with Stark is, Slark is um, I feel like I, I overplay my position. Like I try to do too much too early. Okay. Like, I try to hero farm way, way too early before I get a decent um, lead, and I that see. ends up bringing me farther back than I would have been. Well, when do you actually fight? Do you fight pr- before Shadowblade, or...? Um, I try to get one or two fights in before Shadowblade, and then okay. scale from there, but it, I guess it depends on the situation. Yeah, it does. Um, laning stage-wise, you can definitely participate, and once in a while, if somebody's diving too much somewhere else, you can definitely TP, but as a whole, um, waiting for SP is not uncommon at all. Yeah. And once then, you do a, definitely a mix of ganking and farming. Yeah, but then with, even with the SB, it's hard to get solo pickoffs. I, I I feel like I would need somebody there with me, but the problem with that is the coordination in uh, 2K is uh is not there at all. I want to say it's it's bad, but it's non-existent. Yeah, I I agree with you, but it's also likely the timing that you get your shadow blade also affects things a lot. If you get it late, then all of the supports have an extra like 300 HP than they normally would, and that like completely changes whether or not you can kill them, or right. they might have a mech, or they might have a four staff. So. It all comes down to how effectively you play your early game still. It all that all that stuff affects it. Yeah. I think I found a match. Yeah, I just saw the little uh, oh there we go. Yeah, the animation change. Eight out of eleven. Come on. It looks like you don't buy Calling Blade very often, actually. A lot of your games. Um, yeah, it depends, I guess. Uh, who do I buy it on? Hmm. Pretty much now every melee you should get it on. My mentality with that, my whole mindset with, um, it's extra gold I'm gonna spend on an item yeah. that isn't gonna scale into a battle fury or a. Uh, a talent. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I, it I, doesn't make sense because the return on it is, is much better. Yeah, I get your point. Um, the the easiest argument to say is that you're going to get at least like four last hits you would have missed without having a coin blade. That definitely and exists. So it pays it back and then some. Yep. And then the, the bigger factor, actually, by far, is the speed at which you farm neutrals. It's not even, it's not even close to the same. You're farming yeah. 30% faster. You do 30% more damage. It's like a huge increase. It saves you time, kills the neutrals faster, which saves you HP. Which means you can go do other things. It just completely changes everything. You might kill a camp faster, and therefore you can stack it, or kill it, back off, kill it again, stuff like that. Completely changes everything on a melee. If the game is really tough, and you go to the neutral camps, because your lane is dead or unable, not safe to farm, then you'll farm those more rapidly. Right, you still pick one up later on if you have to rotate over to the jungle. You can do that, but sometimes you could have had it already. You know, that's still like eight seconds or so. That you could have lost. There's other things like you you can eat or you can cut through trees to get to your farming patterns faster. Mm-hmm. So it'll increase your farming speed by like two percent just by like walking through trees instead of having to walk around. All that stuff really adds up in the long in the long uh, course of it. I'm glad that you picked it instantly, but in the future definitely wait to pick until a bit later. Well, maybe okay. not at your MMR because then 
people will try to pick carry over you, perhaps, but I guess we're more worried about the role than we are about um, them uh, counterpicking you. Yeah, I don't really get counterpicked often at this MMR because nobody does that. I don't even know if there's that many super hard counters to spec anyways. It's like, what, Necrolite, maybe like Huskar or something. Yeah, maybe not Huskar. There's a couple of heroes. But yeah, let's get uh, Stout Shield most likely, Self Tango. Let's go for a Mango and maybe like an Ironwood branch as well. Okay. Worst case, um, if you really need more regen, you can eat an iron, you make your iron branch into a tree and eat that with a Tango. Even something like that can make a big difference. Alright, so there's going to be a Slark, which is a little scary, but I think you can deal with this. Pugna's kind of scary. Mm -hmm. This is not the worst game to have Diffusal Blade. <laughs> and it's fun as well. Um, Radiance is still going to be your go-to, though. Okay. Legion oh, as well. We have they, a Morph. Okay, so the important thing is that they actually have very poor... Uh, they don't have any very many supports, so... Um, you should be able to have a better early game. And then that should be perfect. So... Yeah, just these items alone. Go to the lane right away. As soon as you buy your items, start moving. Because you want to check to see, make sure they don't block your small camp with a ward. And then when the rune's spawning, you can go to the rune area. Okie doke. In terms of the Vanguard build this game, um, I think it's pretty good. Against a Legion and a Sark, definitely more survivability is important. Um, Pug Should I get well. an Aquilos before I head into the Vanguard? Uh, maybe. We will see how the game is going. Definitely. But I think a Vanguard's not a terrible idea. You could even go like... I don't know. Phase Vanguard Aquilos are already pretty expensive is one downside. Alright, start moving the top rune. It's gonna be a Pugna. Just go slap him. Um, I would maybe get... I would consider getting Desolate there. It's too bad. We're actually a little bit late. Alright, try to get the rune. Hey. Oh, nice, you got it. Right. Uh, okay, cool, just let him go. And then, uh, I wouldn't even pop a tango. Just walk back. If there's like a dual lane, then I would eat a tango right away, but if there's not, you'll regen up to full eventually. Okay. Let me take this guy off of Yeah, yeah mute him. Good idea. Yeah, I can actually hear him too. Good night. Okay, so your Abaddon should be pulling pretty soon. Um, or he can zone whoever the offlaner is. See who it is? It is a Legion. Okay, so this is a pretty tough dueling. Just do the same principles as before. Um, go for last hits when you can. Eat a Tango as well, because we want to start working on your HP. Alright, they push the wave as well, which is really good, so you're going to have to last hit under the tower. But just uh, go for every last hit that you can. Um, okay, hit that. Perfect. You got this. And I... No, he didn't pull, but... You're already so much better, at, like closer to getting last hits just by having Desolate level 1. Mm -hmm. Don't worry too much about denying. I think okay. uh, last hits are far more important than getting out rest. Perfect. Eat a Tango. Just move your camera down a little bit. I want to always see where both of the heroes are. There you go. And then you, you're giving him free attacks. You should wait until the creep's slow and then go in. You let him attack you. Don't go in. This isn't worth it. No. Get back. Okay. Yeah. You you let that Pugna attack you like three times before you got a last hit. Just when it's time to last hit, walk in and go for the last hit. But don't stand there a long time. Okay. Like you can go in now maybe. Too late. Um, don't max that skill out first, you're gonna go dagger max, don't forget. Okay. Haste. Your lane's kinda messed up now, cause it's pushing, just keep eating tangos. You're gonna get a little zoned now, unfortunately. But, okay, he's pushing a little. Go for this last hit when it gets low. A little Oops. early. Back up, uh, back up, back up, back up, back yeah. up. Um, get dagger next level at level 4. Okay. Adjust your camera. I want to see both heroes. There you go. Sit a little bit farther back. You don't you're too, sitting too close. You want make just look where Pugna is and sit outside of his range. You can deny this probably. Okay. 
Nice. Okay, perfect. Now, the hard part is um, you can't really get to the side shop because mm -hmm. they're constantly pushing, but that's okay. Just play safe for now. Okay, good try. Sit back. Careful, Pugna's coming. I think you're going for that one, maybe. Sorry, he's pushing still. Because he's bad. This is going completely fine. Good try. I think that was your best shot, too. If we had secret shop, we could have, like, a quelling or something, but we don't. That's okay. Yeah, just, just control lane for now, because if he tries to zone like that, you should be okay. Yeah, you don't have What's Desolate because of Catapult, so you got to hold up on that one. Deny the range creep. I would get back, get back. Go for that now. Oh, my bad. Okay. Doing quite well. Uh, I would salve here. Back up a little bit and salve. You could possibly kill this guy. Um, I would go chase after him and get boots while you're over there. Just go run left and actually last hit for now because you took too long. But uh, definitely get boots. But next time, what you should have done um, is probably you could have chased after him a little earlier, maybe daggered or just ran after him just to scare him. Like, even if you have no intention of committing, sit back right. a little bit. Just kind of show the presence. Exactly. Guys. Perfect. Show presence. Yeah, this is a little scary. Nice. And it's okay that they deny some of those as long as you get them a little scared. Or you can do stuff like dagger through the creep wave to get a last hit and harass two of them with it. Things like that are, are really good, too. Deny the ranged. It's below half. Dagger for this last hit. Dagger for it. All right, good. Now we get out. And go buy a Ring of Health right now. Ring of Health, Ring of Health. Okay, perfect. So now we've had a good laning stage. You're getting tons of levels. You're getting some farm. And you have offensive potential. Uh, only thing we're missing is Quelling, really. But we can get that in a moment. We also want to keep an eye on the levels of Legion Commander 2 once he hits 6. And we're also, we also want to keep an eye on the map too to see if there's any kills. So once he hits 6, I would look around. Is that a potential kill right there on Legion? Possibly, yeah. Just keep an, go look at him. See what his HP is at. I think he rotated okay, out. That's fine. Go back to last hitting. But definitely keep an eye on him. Um, I know you saw it, but and I told you to look at something else. But um, after this last hit, I want you to go buy a Quelling. Be patient, be patient. There you go. Okay, perfect. All right, and now you are pretty much set in terms of farming. Um, I'm cool with you still getting a Vanguard this game, based on how much damage. Don't tank range creeps like that, because now you push the wave. Okay. I would consider. Oh, there's two heroes. Don't bother. You could. Yeah, that's okay. Sit back until. Deny range creeps. Actually, back up. Should I go in for those little occasional pokes though? If, uh, if yeah, I see that. Yeah, I thought that was good. Yeah. You just don't want to do it like more than one hit because you're kind of playing off the fact that they're reacting slow is what you're trying to do. And right. that and that worked. You hit him, you'd, he didn't attack you back. You got advantage there. So that was good. Uh, keep Look on the mid right now. See how low Invoker is. Just take a look. Okay. There's a small chance. Oh, you could check. Look again. Look again. Look, look mid. Look mid. Go for it. You got this. See how easy that was? Yeah. Fucking dead. Just instantly dead. And you just walk back to the top lane. You just got first blood. In that situation, um, did I uh, uh, switch too quickly? No, nope, that was perfect. Have... Okay, so don't let the illusion try to get a couple of hits in beforehand. Yeah, that's that's more than fine. You should just you just want to kill him ASAP. Careful, I wouldn't walk that way because you could walk into two. I would walk around. That's safe. And you can cut this tree here, right here. Just walk in here and cut this tree next time when you're walking through. You can get there faster. Uh, not that one. This the one that was right here. But it's okay. okay. Just okay. yeah, just focus on farming for now. But boom, you got first blood as a frickin' Spectre, and you're farming pretty well in a contested lane. Like, that's mm -hmm. so good.
keep playing safe. You're good. Especially because you're slightly ahead now, I would just be more, most concerned about finishing your Vanguard, probably. You could also, if you really want to, you could also just go phase first and play with that until later. He's going to duel, I think. Be careful. Now he's still level 5. That's perfect. Every deny is great. And then next time you get to the secret shop, you get a Vanguard. Um, I think rather than getting an Aquila with Vanguard, we should just do the raindrops. Because it does about the same thing. Okay. But it's way cheaper. Damn. Thought you would get that one. That's good. Okay, so you can sneak over here, finish your vanguard, keep playing like you are. Next level, I want you to get one of your passive, your um, dispersion, just because it's about time. Okay. And then after that, I still want you to finish desolate. Keep an eye on how you look down at your baton, because he's hitting that guy. Doesn't necessarily mean you need to run over, but you can look, is what I mean. Um, I would do a side pull right now, go over here. And then p cut the tree here, and then immediately pull up or left. Just walk in, gotta aggro them, and then grab them, good. And then run left. Alright, you're a little bit late, you could have done that faster. And you don't want to run left, you want to run up or diagonally, is why I told you to go. See now, you've, see, now you've done it too fast, and the creeps meet, which means the pull doesn't work. Ah, uh, okay. You have to do it at an earlier time, so you lost your opportunity a little. Uh, there's three heroes coming, I get this last hit back. Now run away. So pull this way? Yes, exactly. Diagonally upper left. Okay, perfect. So uh, we have haunt again. If you use your mango, you have enough for a gank. So keep an eye on the map again. But there's three heroes, so I would don't know. You're way too far up right now. That was way too far up. Okay. If there's three heroes that are in the lane, you need to kind of play. Just stay away from there. Yeah. Just go to like small camp right now or something. Or you can sap experience. Either one kind of works. Um. But just pull the creep wave in. Start moving to the top. And if like you get dived by four heroes, just like haunt and go somewhere else on the map. You can you can pull these creep waves past. I think. It should be fine. And you've got a you've got a shield on you now, so just keep an eye on that. Just, yep, back to farming now. I think it's okay to be passive like that for a moment if it feels like danger. Get back, get back. As soon as the Legion gets close to you, you need to play safe. You can maybe kill him though. I would mm, nah, I don't think it's worth throwing a dagger. Yeah, just keep last sitting like this. This is okay. That was perfect. Nicely done. Absolutely worth your mana. So um, I, why don't you... Uh, courier's already coming. Shoot. I was going to say fly out a raindrop. It would have been perfect here. But yeah, keep playing safe. Um, the big, the scary thing is really... Careful, careful. Uh, you want to watch out for a hero swinging in and dueling you. It's really the thing that's kind of terrifying right now. I think it's okay for you to farm here, but it's not very safe, to be frank, for three heroes. Yeah, just uh, get back. Vanguard, pretty good here, definitely. My another one of my huge issues I feel like um, that I've come across uh -huh. I don't know when to properly rotate uh, I feel like I don't want to AFK farm the entire game. Um, and you won't. Yeah, just go for the skill. Okay, that's fine. Look at the look on the map. There's somebody else nearby. Keep an eye on the map. The Pugna's dead now, but you got to look at him at least. He was he was right here, and your allies yeah. wrapped around him and killed him, but you weren't paying attention. You got to pay attention to that stuff because you might have been able to get experience. Keep farming the lane, and don't worry about rotating. Your your ability to rotate comes down to your ultimate. So okay. Spectre is basically just a farm farm on the hero until you get Radiance, and when you get the opportunities, you can ulti and go for kills. Um, I would buy a Raindrop and fly it out to you. Um, you could buy like Raindrop and a Wand, something like that is pretty good. Um, go okay. prep for a pull. Um, yeah, I would, rather, I would rather you do a pull here and do the pull this way. Uh, you should start it when the creeps are here at your tower. So you can just you'll have to stand there and tank those for a bit, but no, you're too early, way too early. It's too late now. Um, you'll have to re, yeah, just farm it. Fuck it, just farm it. Kill the small one first, and then you'll get the big one. So buy a raindrop and a magic. Just buy a raindrop. I think you're okay with just a raindrop. Uh, this. And just that. Yep, and fly it out to you. The purpose is um. Go back to the wave now and farm this. Well, they should be the ones pulling. You should be getting creep wave, but 
they're bad and they're standing around. So this is a decent way to, to do it, I think, for now. Uh, that's a kill. Uh, yeah, you can die this, I think. I would maybe back, because he's fast. Back now. Back, 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 back. You do have that, like, three seconds too long. As soon as he, like, uh, gets distance between the two. I would go jungle now. Don't worry about this guy. Killing Legion under tower, like, that's gonna be so hard. Um, yeah, just, just AFK jungle now, I think. So, keep an eye on the map, per always, because you're always gonna have haunt possibilities. And as soon as there's an actual creep wave, you want to go back to that. So I would go back to the creep wave now. What about the legion? Don't worry about him. Uh, actually, you can chase him. Go for him. Alright, give up, give up. Go back to the wave. See, uh, Waves is always the most gold. Uh, keep an eye on your map again. Uh, looks like Morphling is running into him. Nope, he's safe. So just look for those opportunities. See if like there's a gank or there's two heroes nearby. If that's the case, then you want to show up and steal the kill. So it's all about getting your radiance now and your, your relic. I should um, pick up a phase at this point. Uh, I think we're just going to skip at this game. You're doing fine. You've, you're already quite tanky. You've already sidetracked your build a bit by uh, deny of the range creep. Okay, that's most of it. And this is a little dangerous to stand that long. I, th I would have denied the range creep and backed. Just because if, yeah, see, if somebody comes up from behind these, it could have done a dual setup on you. Just pull the creep wave closer to your tower for safety. Perfect. Because you don't really need phase boots, I think, here. You don't need okay. it to last hit. You've got Qualing Blade. Uh, look at the engagement in the jungle. Just look over. There you go. Okay, he's fine. He's fine. And again, you don't have to move just because I told you to look, okay? I just right. want you to look to see what's happening in the off chance that you need to be there. And I, I don't know why this guy does this shit. He shouldn't even be here. They should be doing making space for you, not pushing your lane. It's confusing, but... Okay. And look, like some games you're just going to win because they're going to lower morale and be mad because your early game went better. Like, things like that will also happen. I don't always, again, I don't always push in lane. I would just go back jungle. Okay, you can kill. Yeah, I think you can maybe kill this guy. Um, I would, yeah, just kill Pugna, I think. This is kind of dangerous. You definitely need a haunt. You, you, that was... It's going to be close. Alright, run. Just keep running. Don't stop running. Dagger that guy when you can. Uh, no, 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 no. no. I didn't say run back in. You gotta haunt and get out. I think it's... I would haunt and go... Yeah, just run. Just fucking run. Just keep running. Don't go back in next time. That was way too dangerous. I want you to hang on in the area, then dagger from range to see if the kill was there. But uh, definitely not what you just did. Uh, just AFK jungle right now. You'll heal back up. Just kill the big one first. Always the big one. Because this one, at least in this case, because um, it does the, the damage or... And your vanguard blocks all the damage anyway, so... Okay, so, yeah, next time just, I wanted you to stay in range for the nuke to just maybe get the kill. Yeah, but don't commit. Okay. Uh, don't go to the wave, Go stay in jungle for a bit, because they're, they're pushing the tower pretty heavily. Well, okay, there's he that. actually did abandon. We'll see if the game actually ends here. But I, I think you can easily see that the projection of this game is incredible compared to where you're normally at. Your yeah. last hits are still pretty low. But again, it was a dual lane, and it was two heroes that are scary for you to lane against. And you're going to get a relic at a really fast time. And as soon as this is dead, I would run back to the top lane to farm the wave. Oh, you also got dual damage. That's nice. I forgot about that. Yeah, oh, I didn't even see that. Your raindrop definitely kept you alive, by the way. I don't know if you noticed, but... Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That was awesome. You used three charges for it. So it's basically done everything you wanted to. It was like equivalent to a couple clarities. And it kept you alive. So it's definitely been good. Do I take a second point here in uh, Haunt or? Um, it's kind of up to you. I think I would put it into Dispersion, arguably. Because all it would do is give you one more second of duration, which is not that valuable. I usually don't max Haunt. If anything, I, I take um, stats over it. Uh, later game, I would completely disagree with that, but especially because the cooldown goes down. Right. Uh, but I'm saying somewhere Malikut, during Malikut. mid, like, I, I sometimes skip 11. That's fine. That's totally fine. But once you get items and stuff, then definitely get it. I wouldn't get stats over it ever. If you're getting stats over it, then you're talking, like, after 16 or something, or level 15, maybe. It's perfect. And then I would probably just, yeah, kill the tower. Help against Slark. Probably not going to kill him. Uh, maybe. Keep chasing. Okay, he's gone. Just, uh, I would go jungle this way. 
kill this camp, this camp, the run top. Or minimum kill like this camp and then run to the bottom. Oh, this one's gonna take a while. Hmm. Maybe this isn't worth it. Get them all down to like 200 HP and then dagger to the right is maybe. I just ditched. Go bottom now. I think killing one was good enough. The problem is you don't farm neutrals super fast, and um, you're, so, you're so close to a relic that you might as well just get the farm from a lane. And unfortunately, Pitlord's going to go down there and he's going to nuke it because he's a dumbass. But um, just like ping here, maybe he'll let you farm. No, I doubt it. Uh, oh, not in the. Alright, so just, yep, yeah, there it is. Just try to get the last hits. If you get the last hit, you got a relic. I'd start flying the courier to secret shop too, if you have a second. Not too early. Um, yeah, he keeps stealing the creep rates. Go to the small camp. If you get all the creeps down to 200 HP, then you can Spectral Dagger over here, nuking both while moving through to save you time. And now Dagger 3 to the large camp. Dagger to the large camp. Oh, Oops. I missed it. Lost that efficiency. I would drop your um, your Ironwood branch. Messed it up. Okay, perfect. You don't need to right click that much right now. Just just let yourself auto attack. You can look at the map and stuff sometimes when you're farming like this. Um, see like what your heroes have for items. Like look where the state of the map is. Things like that. Don't worry about your APM when you're when you're drunk lane basically. Um, just try to AFK farm until you get radiance. I, I wouldn't go to that. Don't haunt in. Definitely not. Uh, do the medium camp I think. Actually maybe haunt in now. Look 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 look. Somebody's low. See that low guy? Uh, we'll see if he lives. I would go for Pugna, yeah, that's a good choice. It's like he blink dodged your dagger, maybe? Um, I think it was supposed to connect, I don't know if it did though. Probably just didn't kill him. That was a good try though. But, um... Yeah, he blinked it. I, the only reason I knew that you should go back in is because I, right before your camera moved away... Uh -huh. Hit that tower, hit that tower. I think it's okay. As soon as your camera moved away, the Nyx assassin stunned somebody and they looked kind of low. So that's why I told you to look back. So try to definitely watch fights like that. If you're just AFK jungling, watch the fights and look for those opportunities. Okay. If you can get any of these last hits, then you've got Radiance. I would get back. Now you've stayed too long. So I would walk to... I would just walk to the jungle here and go through now. Now that you have Relic and Quelling, you farm a lot faster. And then when you can, I would fly out like a... I don't know. You could fly out like another Raindrop and a TP and the Radiance or something. Okay. Take a look at the fight. Okay, that's all good. Uh, farm, go to the creep wave here. This is where you should farm now. You basically want to sit in an area that lets you get farm that isn't where the action is. Because once you have Radiance, the game pretty much ends. Because you'd be ahead at that point. And you're still a little behind, but you're not that far behind considering the circumstances. Again, the important thing is that you haven't died. You haven't died any times. I think you got it. Feel free to just auto attack these, by the way. Just attack the ones that the creeps aren't attacking to kill them oh, okay. faster. And then don't miss any auto attacks. Because you could have had this whole creep wave finished already, and then you spend less time down here in a dangerous place. Like right now, you could get ganked, hypothetically. Yeah, raindrop and a TP, and I'll get out. You can't be here anymore. And don't next time, don't run this way. I would run okay. this way, and then go into jungle. Because if you run this way, it looks like they're going... Um, I would farm just a large camp now, by the way. Because it looks like... Um, if you ran straight north, it looks like you're going to the jungle to farm. If you run to the right, you could be teleporting... You could be running to get a TP. Like, there's a huge difference there. What should I drop? Uh, farm this now. Cut cut one of the trees with the quelling. Like, any of these. Yep, perfect. Should I drop an item? Um, I'm gonna have to. What a... Sorry, what's the raindrop? Um, I would just eat your mango, probably, at this point. Rest in peace, mango. Thanks for the help. So, again, look at the map. You, you just saw two heroes, you don't know what their HP states are. There was a Pugna going into your jungle, and there was somebody pushing top. Yeah, that, um, that's one thing I always fail to check. This is Dan's, by the way. I would get out. I would run this way right now. Because you saw Slark right here. He disappeared, mm -hmm. and Slark has a really good night vision. So there's a really high chance. Get the bounty rune. 
and then get ready to hunt. You hunt right away. You could have daggered on through Pugna onto the Legion as well, by the way, to double okay. to double hit that. Uh, and you also should have haunted like two seconds earlier. You're not watching the map well enough. Okay. So next items. Um, you already have decent HP. Um, you could buy probably Manta style next. Yeah, Manta next for sure. Um, or Phase, Phase into Manta perhaps. You shouldn't let these guys steal last hits from you, by the way. You should be able to get every single last hit with Quelling and Radiance. Unless they use nukes. Yeah, I would just honestly go Yasha and Namanta. I don't think you really need phase that much this game, personally. I feel like there isn't a whole lot of chasing going on. Yeah. Maybe it's just because the MMR bracket, but... If we buy it at this point, it's just 800 gold that delays you from like your heart and your manta, and I feel like those are going to be better. So creeps are respawning in about 5 seconds, so just stay here. Yep. Oh, they clearly have vision. Alright, I would dagger through to the trees. You need to run, dude. Dagger. You are waiting way too long here. The fact that you're alive right now is incredible, actually. Yeah, I thought stay, I could take stay that in the area. There. Stay in the area. Look to maybe dagger. Look at the fight, look at the fight. You don't even know what's happening. Alright, now you get out. I would probably not. I would dagger invoker right now. And now I would start moving in. Ooh, this is really dangerous. I would TP immediately. Like you got to you got to watch the fight. If you're not watching the fight, you're messing up. And as soon as those heroes start running, you instantly dagger to the trees and run. You hesitated yeah. way too long. They if the legion wasn't stupid, he could have dueled you and you just would have died. Um, start walking, buy TP right now, and start walking to the jungle. Your jungle? Yeah. Because you have Haunt in 20, so you're going to be able to do get to the fight without having to show up to your teammates. Mm -hmm. So once I pick up the, the Yasha, the raindrop should be done. Yeah, I think we'll keep quelling over raindrop, most okay. likely. Kill one small creep first, so that he'll spawn skeletons, and then finish the big one. Again, watch fights. Alright, go to next camp. Cut the tree right here. And then walk through. Just auto attack the ground more. You're right clicking heroes or creeps too much and lowering your efficiency. Take a look at the heroes, see what's going on, farm the next camp. Is that a pick off now? Half HP Legion? Um, I, I would say play around your team. Wait until your fight team starts a fight, and that's when you hunt. You're past the pick off stage, you're into team fight stage. So you don't want to just use it for like solo kills. It's more about giving your team fight big wins. So movement speed at this point is really good because it makes your illusions run faster. So the Asha right now is great. It's maybe one reason why like even saving for like a BOT could be good. Um, one thing we maybe messed up here is we could have pulled the creep wave up. Um, so that the that it spawned. Okay. Uh, keep an eye on the fight. How's the fight going? Alright, yeah, it's definitely time. Go for invoker, I think. Uh, I wouldn't have attacked the tower there because there's a chance that he could have gone invis in time to get out. So you needed to save your attack for the instant upon him coming out of Yules, but okay. small in that pick. And again, we weren't watching the fight well enough, because the fight yeah, was already very were, the developed. the camera was just panning on me, it's pretty bad. The, the fight was already so developed by the time it started, by the time we actually haunted. We should ideally haunt before he even gets a duel off, that way he doesn't get to blink. Um, I would... I would probably just walk to the mid lane from here, where the creep wave is. Just walk past the tower, it's fine. And then I would just farm this out and take mid racks, because the game is basically over. But same principle kind of applies, the things we did this game. Um, go back, get Radiance, play safe until you can get your next item. And once you get Manta, then you can play a lot more aggressively. Because mm -hmm. then if Legion blinks on you, um, then you can pop Manta. If Pugna decreps you, you can Manta, things like that. Should still keep an eye on the battle, by the way. You haven't looked at anything yet. You've just been you're focusing way too much on what you're slapping. I would maybe go yeah, this is worth it. Radiance, isn't it great? All right, you might die here. Um yeah. That's okay though. Um you can buy your ultimate orb, among other things. Should I drop the uh quelling at this point? Um You can hold on to it on because you're not gonna as soon as you make manta you'll have space again. 
Going for the Pugna kill is definitely overly dangerous, but it's not a huge deal. Um, you only need like 500 gold from Manta anyways. Yeah. Afterwards you could also maybe just buy heart. Um, you could buy boots to travel. You could get a plate mill might be a really good idea actually. I've never actually done a blade mill spec. Oh, I said plate mill, but blade mill also would work oh, actually. Okay. Both would not be bad. Um, blade mills, probably good, honestly. You would definitely beat the. You would beat the um, uh, legion before he could kill you. That's for sure. All right, grab your items in three seconds. Oh no, it's on the courier. I see. Um, you could, you could haunt. Hypothetically, to get closer. If you see an opportunity, I don't know if this is one. If you get stunned. Oh, okay. Or you could just use that. And then retransfer the courier. Oh, shit. He got fucked up. Yeah, so he does have a blade mill. Um, I would play a little safe here. You're a little far up. Get back, get back. I kind of feel like you should just buy, like, a heart this game right now if you buy more survivable rather than damage then you will be better against blade mill things this is kind of dangerous they should really be able to kill one of you guys right now I think but they're not very good I would even consider daggering towards their fountain for vision go for invoker You should also be moving between your attacks, by the way. Don't just stand there and auto attack. Also, your camera position was really bad there. Readjust it if it's in a bad place. Nice, you got your items before the curry deck. Can you move your? Can you edge pan for a second? I want to see how fast your camera is. It's really slow. You need to up the speed. Okay. It'll help you a lot because then you won't feel as like blocked by seeing things. Because every time you move your camera, it'll go faster. Okay. Same thing, look at heroes right now. You could look at Invoker, see what he's got, how much mana does he have, he has Yules. Just give him the dagger, you got this. Okay. So yeah, I would have probably bought Heart next. Would have been the best. You can maybe get Scotty, you could go like AC perhaps or something. It's kind of up to you. But the reason I'm saying Heart is because Blade Mill is um, very good against high damage heroes, so if you go more survivability then you'll have more HP to offset the blade mill reflection. Um, but you could get AC if there's only physical damage coming from them. You could get a hood or a, uh, even like a yeah, hood someday might be good. This would be a decent um, haunt here. He's gonna duel you. That was... okay, luckily he didn't use blade mail. Alright, you're good. So you guys won. Okay. So yeah, arguably just as hard of a lane as the one that you did in the replay, but the difference was huge. You pop in, you get a last hit, you back out. You pop in, get a last hit, and you back out again. And you eventually buy the items you need. And you use your mana efficiently. You wait for opportunities and you get them. Like the first blood you got on Invoker like completely changed the game alone. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do. You just sit around and like do okay until you can get kills. And then you go back to farming, and then you haunt and get another kill, and then you go back to farming, and then eventually you got radiance, and now then the whole game changes, and then you get a tanky item after it, and then the game gets even harder for your opponents, and harder and harder and harder, and then game kind of ends. Yeah, at that point, I feel like once I got the radiance, it was already, you know, it was pretty much game over. Yeah, and that was even without the abandon. Even if that guy didn't abandon, the game already felt over to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah well. it looked like it was pretty. Go it was going pretty well on our you, side. Because you were three zero and two, you were the hard carry. You hadn't died yet. You hadn't given your net worth over to your opponents. You were continuing to take net worth from them, mm -hmm. and you were just going to get more and more into the late game because you're a specter and you're the, one of the hardest carries in the game. So as long as you itemize well late game, there's and you play relatively okay positioning wise, there's no way you lose that game. From Is the it position okay over here in. with um, just the boots? Um, in the lineage stage when you had boots? Oh, yeah. are, are you talking at this point in the game with just brown? It's fine. Um, if you're having trouble chasing people down, or for example, if you're haunting into a team fight and going on the supports and they're able to get away, then something like phase can be really useful. But that game, they didn't really have heroes that could get away very fast. Like right. Slark could go invis or whatever, but does phase doesn't really help you against that. So 
Um, I, I felt justified just keeping you at Brown Boots that game just because you didn't really need it. Um, maybe you could buy treads or something so that you could do more damage against Slark or Legion or something. Um, right, the extra 950 was better spent somewhere else. Exactly. Like in the laning stage, if you don't go Vanguard, I would definitely get phased then. Okay. But if you're going to build a Vanguard, I think Brown Boots is okay to stay on in this in certain situations. If you need more chase, though, if you're having trouble catching up to them, definitely get phased. But in that game, Brown Boots was completely okay. So it was just like a, an audible game, like a, a kind of a rare game where it was completely fine. Mm, okay. So, and maybe we should have had you go Heart immediately after the Manta rather than the Manta style. But I'm okay with the Manta in that game just because it does give you some good protection against some other heroes. Yeah, I could have. Uh, Decrep and confused legion if he jumps on if he blinks on you you just press manta and then he doesn't know which one to duel things like that can change a game or if you get cold snapped or if they have an orchid you know yeah helps the manta a lot. really gets me out of certain situations there yep so you had 561 gpm that game which is really good um obviously you could have lasted a bit better we could have farmed a little bit better but mm -hmm. as a whole it's all about killing and not dying while still farming so even if you never get better at farming just doing this principle of not dying will completely change your game impact mm -hmm. even against dual lanes that and with uh supports that don't know what they're doing which that guy it, did, that guy definitely it, did not it's usually dual lanes i, I don't really run into tri lanes or solo offs uh -huh. but for the most part at this mmr it's, it's duels yeah so basically every game should be like this one and when you yeah. play them as a hard carry just play conservatively have a good starting item build maximize your mana in the early game get kills where you can when they make mistakes mm -hmm. and sometimes your allies are going to keep being idiots but as long as you never die even if they die like four times as long as you the carry never die it should allow you to win mid game would fights. it make that much of a difference let's say hypothetically my i have you know four retards on the team and mm -hmm. then i happen to play decent would it be that big of a factor in in the outcome oh uh, what with them dying that many times yeah because i feel like it could I, yes I, I feel like at a certain point, no matter how hard they carry, there's always going to be a tipping point where I just can't bounce back. I can't carry one on five. You know what I mean? But that comes down to how good you are as a player. Like, for example, if you had that kind of a start and I started playing the game, even if everybody on the team had four more deaths, right. I could still easily win it because I know that I'm always going to get a kill when I haunt. I'm almost always going to make good decisions. The only thing I would ever die to that game is probably duel into other damage sources. Right. But I could instantly get... I could get the Radiance maybe like a minute or two faster than you did and then... Right. I that could, the I wouldn't have died against the Pugna, for example, and I would have engaged on fights earlier than you did. I would have pressed my ult faster, and then Legion maybe wouldn't have killed a guy, and it right. just it would have become like three for nothing L fights instead of like three for one fights. Right, like little things like that. Yeah, absolutely add up and affect the game. And I, you know, I would have transitioned items perfectly or so or near to perfect, better, much better than the MMR, for example, right, than right. the average person. And everything matters in the late game, and Legion never does anything. Slark never can really deal with me once I get like I would get like heart and then I would get butterfly and then Slark wouldn't be able to hit me anymore and then the game is just completely over they have like no way to deal with me anymore yeah because that, that that's the one thing that I, I kind of get like you know um I guess I get I, I get put off on it's the fact that I feel like after a certain point there's no matter how hard I can carry the game I can't stop somebody from going oh and 13 like they're pugna you know what I mean yeah but there was a whole lot of shit that happened for them to get 13 kills, and you were involved in that by being, hypothetically, by being on Pugna's team. Like, yeah, Sven rage quit this game, but what if he just played better early game? What if he got, like, four kills in his lane? Or what if he, like, smoked top with help from one other person and killed you using Legion Duel? Like, they easily could have killed you in lane. You made some mistakes there, positioning-wise. So, like, yeah, Pugna might have died 13 times, but if you played, if his teammates played better in the laning stage then he wouldn't have died 13 times. Like, that's the only difference between this game and the other game that you played. Like, except for the fact that your Morphling got kills. But keep in mind what you did. You solo killed the guy that he was against. You, yep. Or you, you you first blooded him with his help, so he got gold and lane crate and, and lane space. He only got 89 CS that game as Morphling. That's, like, abysmal as a mid player. But yeah, you awesome. killed him in lane, so it allowed your team to just completely snowball out of control, and that's partially because of you. So... Like that that's that's all it takes to take a guy that's zero and thirteen on Pugna and another guy who ends up being like super positive. It's just like a couple kills here or there because mm -hmm. players at your MMR don't understand the intricacies, so they just like heavily tilt. If they die too many times, they have no idea how to recover. So if you just get them to that point where they're ahead, then they know what to do. But if they're behind, they have no fucking clue what to do and they definitely yeah, lose. That that's how I felt the other day when I when I played an O and uh or it was a one and thirteen sniper. Mm-hmm. They, they tri-laned me top and just kept 
uh, I rotated. Every time I rotated, they filtered into that lane, and it just became to the point where I couldn't do anything. I literally was completely useless by the time the game reached whatever, 30, 40 minutes. So what it sounds like in that case, what you did wrong is you would just go to lanes to farm. What you could do instead is get, like, level 6, and then smoke with, like, a support, and then approach mid. Drop a smoke, throw a shrapnel, attack them, like, three times, and shoot them with your assassinate. And then you get a kill, and then if they rotate, it doesn't matter because you already got the kill. But if you show up somewhere to passively farm, you're probably not going to catch up that fast. Or if your lane is really pressured, you did what we did this game. You just ditched the lane at some point when it felt mm -hmm. too dangerous, and you just AFK jungled. So it's a little slow, but you got farm and you didn't die, which means you're ahead. And people right. at this MMR aren't going to know to look for you there. So it's really safe for you to just ditch the lane at some point and go jungle, in which case the quelling is perfect. And the yeah. vanguard is perfect because then you're just healing. So and that one time that you got low, I didn't tell you to go back to base. I said instantly start jungling because I know that over yeah, yeah, time that, your vanguard will heal. Yeah, that's that I picked up off of that because I probably would have just turned around and went back to base and probably TP'd back in. And then you would have lost 40 seconds, and you would have yep. lost 50 gold to a TP, and you wouldn't have had a TP ready in the next fight where you might have needed it, and you didn't get that farm that you got by AFK jungling. Like all that stuff matters. If they have like an invis here and they're hunting you, and it's obvious, then it's dangerous to do that stuff. But right, but, but at in that, that point, game, stuck wasn't wasn't even on the map. Exactly, or at least I didn't expect it. If yeah. you would have ganked you, that would have been like, oh, that's unlucky, or whatever, but... Yeah. Yeah, so all of these little things are just building your advantage to a point where you are out of control, and that's what happened at the end game. Your net worth was like 17k, and their highest net worth was barely 10k for Invoker. So mm -hmm. if you just de keep delaying that, if the game was somehow close, delay that until you're like way, way ahead of them. If you had one more item, the heart, then there's actually no way these guys kill you. If your team is in the area, there's no way. Yeah, and they then, can't with the team around. Exactly. So that's all you got to do. Push those advantages so your team has a better game, that their morale is higher, and your MMR will go up. So just the micro stuff in the beginning. Because once we fine-tune the micro, like the little things I've been doing wrong in the beginning, it'll scale mm -hmm. better later on. Yeah, you're just not considering the the acceleration in the laning stage as well as you should. And right, you're right. Playing I, I feel game. like my whole mentality with it is just, you know, AFK farm until I get fat, and then I'll wreck. But that's not yeah, the case. Most absolutely of the time. not. That's not Dota. Like, that is that is like... Like, baby's Dota, you know, you just sit and think, oh, I'm just going to get gold, and then I'll be strong, and then I'll fight when I feel safe. But you got yeah. to, you have to mix in the farming with the fighting, and the players that will always win versus your style are the ones that are going to do a mix of fighting and farming. I mean, right. and, and it's not even like your AFK farming is that fast yet, either, is the other problem. Um, but, you know, there's better heroes to AFK farm than the one that you're playing, even. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you got to mix them together, especially when playing Spectre. Spectre is the easiest way to get kills. Anywhere on the map, any hero that's low, 200 magic damage, and maybe one right click if you don't get and stunned. And always kill still with the haunt if I see it, right? Always. Early game. Always. It's assuming... Oh. Yeah, pretty much always. You're pretty much always. Because everybody should know that once Spectre gets farmed and gets a little ahead, that the game ends. Because right. you'll so have Radiance. Right. There's no debate at that point. Just kill still if I see it. Absolutely. And if they start flaming you, just fucking mute them right away. Just get it over yeah. with. Mute them, go back to farming, and once you get Radiance... Remember how I said don't use haunt anymore unless it's a team fight? Right. Because that's what Spectre gives you. Once you get Radiance and you have haunt ready... Anytime there's a team fight, that you know that their heroes have to just run for like five seconds because they're yeah. going to be taking 50 or 60 magic damage a second or whatever. Yeah, uh, 50 magic damage per second. They're going to miss one seventh of the time, and if they if they're by themselves, they're just going to take pure damage as well. It's like they just can't fight anymore. So it gives you this like gank tool early mid game once you get radiance. It's a huge team fight tool that makes it so easy to win fights unless they're way ahead, and then from there you should just use it during fights, win fights for your team, and then it just you know, you get this item advantage, and then they just can't fight you anymore. The game's over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the only way they win that game is if they started ganking you in early mid game, ideally before radiance, and tried to limit your impact a little bit and steal some of your gold away from you. And then they they could have won the game. But these guys don't know how to gank. So I bet you could raise your MMR by like a thousand just playing Spectre like this. You definitely really need to work on your map, your uh, map awareness. You're focusing way too much on right clicking on creeps on your jungling and shit. Yeah, like, I'm not even panning the camera over. Yeah, I don't even think you're looking at the minimap. I think you're just staring at the creeps that you're farming to think, like, I need to farm this faster or something. Yeah. Just, just like, A-click the ground. You should really only need to, like, right-click once every four seconds or something, maximum, most times. Like, you always kill it in efficiency. Like, kill kill the smaller creeps, then use Desolate to kill the big creep or whatever. Okay. Or if you have Radiance, kill one of the trolls so it spawns skeletons so your farm rate increases while your Radiance burns them down slowly. Like things like that, but you're you're focusing way too much on the neutrals you're farming. Look around the map for those early kills, and the same for the laning stage. As soon as you hit six and you have mana for haunt and dagger, look for those heroes that are below 200 HP, and you've got them. Okay. So, yeah. Any other questions? Um, just one last one, real quick on 
let's say I am trying to MMR climb just to get out of my bracket, mm-hmm. the three K bracket, three to four, it's pretty much the same bullshit as as the two. No, yeah, really, just more yeah. polished bullshit. Exactly, pretty much all like that all the way up to five K actually, and then it becomes a little bit, a little it bit becomes refined. an actual play style. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Okay, so do you recommend to spec spam or whoever? Absolutely not. Spam one hero just to try to climb up to five. No, not at all. Because, like we talked about earlier, you're just going to be playing one hero, and it's situational, and eventually you're going to play against players, like in the 4K range especially, where they actually do start ganking. These guys have no fucking clue how to move around the map or to gank, your teammates right. included. So as soon as they learn how to do that, you're just going to get heavily punished early, and you're not really going to know why. And then that's going to be your failings and map awareness, mm-hmm. and game sense. Like, some of the times when I told you to run, because I knew it was dangerous... Those are things like, oh, the heroes are respawning. You've been farming here for 15 seconds, so it's possible that somebody TP to tower and has already is already shadow bladed underneath you and you could gank you. Things like that, like right. things that you'll experience by dying to it. So um, yeah, there were there was two or three instances where I f- felt like I could have got picked off, but luckily I didn't because they were bad. But exactly, but you sh- you should always play around what their potential is, not how bad they are, because that's just going to limit you in the long run. It's all it's all about. I mean, there's going to be some games where playing greedier will help you, but almost always playing not greedy is going to be the best. Maximizing your greed while playing safe is almost always the the better consistent way to do it. So it's not play the way you were playing earlier, it's play don't let them kill you mid game basically is like absolutely something that should never happen when you're playing carry. It's easily the biggest way to throw a lead is to feed carry gold over to your opponents. Right. So okay. play variety cores, same principles though. Have a decent laning stage. Let that transition using your hero skills. Sometimes par- participate in team fights. Um, every hero's playstyle is different. In some ways, Spectre is really easy because it's just haunt dagger. Some heroes require things like, like gyrocopter. If there's a fight by a tower, you should TP, show up, do a call down rocket barrage, and try to help you help your team get kills. But Spectre is pretty straightforward. Yeah, the one thing I did notice though that uh, you, you made a point of was to max the dagger, and I saw that damage actually made a difference. Yeah, because that damage and that slow um, in unison actually got me two or three last hit, two or three hits in that Easily. I probably wouldn't have gotten. Yeah, exactly. If they're only slowed by eight percent, that's nothing. But twenty percent, right. and you giving you twenty percent, that's a forty percent swing versus the sixteen that you had before. Right. So that's minimum three more. If they don't have that a disable. I, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, makes all the difference definitely. Yeah, I didn't realize. That. I I see that now playing this one. And the same thing for the last inning. You did it that one time with that range creep and the catapult that you weren't going to be able to last it otherwise. Yeah. Like, occasionally, it's worth it for times like that. Like, oh man, I could get three last hits that they're going to deny and harass the hero. All right, I'll spend the 200 mana, or I'll spend the 160 mana. That's worth it in this case. Yeah, do, right. do things like that sometimes, and maybe it'll trade for your mango or whatever, but. Yeah, it'll be worth it gold wise. Yeah, because it'll accelerate you to that point where you're finally getting close to Radiance, and then Radiance is done. I mean, your Radiance is still slow, but you did go Vanguard first, which helped. Um, and again, you also didn't have free farm because it was a scary dual lane in your. I bet I uh, bet didn't know how to play. So, yeah. What was yeah. my Radiance time? What was it? Let me see. It, your Radiant? What do you mean? Uh, I don't know if I could see it. I think you can see it now. Are you talking about like your support pushing fighting farming thing? Uh, No, just the Radiance time. What time did I pick it up on? Oh, it was a little bit after 20. Uh, actually, we can see that in the graph. Um, yeah, but to compare this. your previous spec games, you had five less deaths than your previous performances. Mm-hmm. You had one more assist. You had 12 more GPM, 23 more XPM. Um, and you had seven less kills. So the what that probably means is basically you would usually play games that were much longer, and you'd be like what 12, 12, six, and nineteen. Yeah, but, stuff but, like that. Yeah, but your GPM more... was still faster, and you didn't even get into the meat of the game because there was abandons and they kind of gave up. Yeah, my so. my spec games usually last forty minutes, give or take. Okay. Forty forty five. Yeah, and you got radiance at twenty two minutes. Twenty two minutes, oh, okay. twenty two seconds. So compared to your average timing of what whatever you get diffusal blade at guaranteed going to be later than this because i feel like uh that other game i remember you had just vanguard and it was 12 minutes and this game you had boots and vanguard at just before nine minutes you were already like three minutes ahead plus boots so you were like way ahead in terms of farming this game it wasn't even close actually right hmm. okay i see the difference good it's mostly laning. dota is a lot about laning it really is yeah, that, that, that initial laning stage really changed the uh, the progressive outcome of it. I mean, even with the Abandon. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I that guy didn't even Abandon until, like, what? It was probably... Let's see right. when he stopped buying items. His last item was at 15 minutes. Like, yeah, like do- 15 minutes in. Like, almost every single time that I coach somebody, I focus on the first 
14 minutes of the game max. I don't even look at anything else because it's not worth it. The early right. part of the game at is... At that point, the, the pace is already set. Exactly. It's it's the beginning of the... Do you ever play... You've ever played StarCraft? I did back in the day. I, so, don't, I don't touch it anymore. I'm, so I'm, it's like I the same thing up. as like building extra workers in the early game. It's it's compounding advantage. The, the first... The first 10 minutes of last hits and farm efficiency and how much you pressure your opponent changes everything. Because then it gives you an advantage that you can use to exert pressure on the map if you do it in the right way. And then that will allow you to just stomp a game. So, yeah. yeah. It's all about the first 10 minutes. All about the first 10 minutes. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Like, 10 minutes is where the swing should be. Basically, yeah. It's it's about laning kills and stuff like that, too. And it's also about your last hits. Again, practice your last hitting because you miss probably... 10 last hits that you could have had otherwise or something and that makes the difference yeah exactly then it's a faster relic you get your relic at 18 minutes instead of just before 20 or 19 and mm -hmm. then you get your radiance a minute earlier and maybe you would have had it in time for when their timing push happened or when there was that roshan fight you would have had radiance or not had radiance like completely changes everything and these timings are gonna have to get tighter and tighter and tighter as you as get you higher mmr yeah because what's the um the hugest difference like you notice when you were climbing like um between like three and four. And uh, I well when I when I first got calibrated, I was about four point seven. So oh, okay, so you calibrated in high. 2014. Um, and I, personally, I thought that I was, I thought that that was too low. I was like, oh, that's weird. My friends all got calibrated at like five k ish about there. So I was like, oh, I'm, I'm. I felt the same way when I did the um the TI whatever that was the uh, the battle pass calibration. Yeah. They they dropped me to uh I think two one, and I I don't feel like I'm a oh, two geez. one. Um yeah, that's really low. I, I would argue that your laning stage look like a two one, not right. not not to be mean or anything, but it no didn't. no 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 no. I, like I, this is why I I wanted you to help me with this because you can be completely blunt. I don't feel any type of way yeah. about it. the 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 worst thing that you can do as a player in Dota is stand in your lane and not do anything. That's by far the worst thing you can do. And okay. uh, watching that replay that we watched, that's basically what you did the first three minutes. You did nothing. Yeah, because I was so hesitant on on engaging at all. So all you did was. The creeps died, and you got experience. That's basically all you did. And then when your wisp would get gone on, you'd throw a dagger out and then walk away. So that that laning stage was definitely like 2k easily. This laning stage was like 3.5 minimum, like absolute minimum. It's like it's that's there's not that much difference actually between like a low 2k player and a low 3k player. It's not huge because uh, all all players are like a bell curve. So like everybody that's in the big bell curve, which is basically like 1.5 to like 3.5k players. Uh -huh. Like, they're not that different. There are big differences, but it's not that much. It doesn't take more than, like, a little bit of a little bit of learning. A couple months, and you can easily jump that gap if you understand what you're doing wrong and you change your play. So, yeah, it's it doesn't... You can definitely improve from this, I'm sure. Because I'm, I'm 1,500 matches in, and I'm still stuck on 2.6. It's it just... It's a little mm. frustrating. I mean, I, I don't think that's a, that's terrible. I mean, I've played probably, like, 10,000 matches of Dota or something insane like that. I played a fuckload of Dota. I've played Dota since, like, 2008 or something. And most mm -hmm. pro players are the same. They've played, like, 10 years or something. Crazy. Weeha has been playing Dota since he was 9 years old, for God's sake. Yeah. yeah. So, it's it just takes a long time, and some people are can see the things, and they can learn faster than others, like... I remember I used to play Spectre in Dota 1. You know what I do? I do just what you did. I bought brown boots, I'd buy a Vanguard, and then I would go to the jungle and just AFK jungle. I didn't even buy a Quelling Blade. I would just be like, well, this is the safe way to get my Radiance, but it wasn't a fast way, and there was definitely faster ways. And I just didn't know. I didn't know any better. So sometimes it just takes a little bit of a push to like show this is what you're doing wrong. So I'm, I'm honestly, I'm glad you signed up, because I think, I think you can use this info and, and definitely accelerate. So it'll be different for every hero, but um, it's all about last city, it's all about early gain, and even in solo queue working with dumbasses or players that have no idea how to support, you definitely can raise your MMR with good play. Because I guarantee that you had a huge impact on this game, even if you didn't put up the biggest numbers. And yeah. some games, it just won't work. Like, even if you play just as good this game, you're still going to lose because your teammates are bad sometimes or your composition's terrible. But but I guarantee that you can win at least, like, if you play like this every game, you're going to win 80% of your games, mm -hmm. regardless of the carry you pick. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to take that and, and try to filter that idea and ideal and mindset to other carries so i don't think i can spec spam so again uh, it's a couple of principles calling blade obviously for melee you mm -hmm. need some type of sustain whether that's lifesteal or vanguard or for pl for example you have illusions that can tank for you you usually need some kind of sustain um and then that'll transition you into your team fighting early game mid game item whatever dragon lance bkbs whatever and then transition through your item build. So again, uh, like I said at the beginning, um, look at a Dota buff. Go to Dota buff, click on the hero, and I don't think I ever actually linked this to you, but um, 
I just found this. Oh, actually, I did the the Spectre guides or whatever. Yeah, I saw the spec guide. Yeah, just find, just watch a watch a game that you think looks interesting. Like, oh wow, he actually got Defusal Blade first this game. All of them are looking like they actually did get Radiance. Except yeah, for uh, this one guy got a Manta at seventeen minutes or something. Yeah, yeah. freezing. Yeah, so maybe watch the game and be like, huh, what did he do this game, and why did he why did he buy a Diffusal Manta this game, and he's against a. Sven. Sand King, a Sven, a Potom. This is very similar to the heroes you're against, actually. Yeah, minus the Dazzle. Exactly. So watch this game and be like, why did he justify buying a Manta first? And the reality is probably the Legion Commander or something. The Sven is actually really scary, definitely, in a 1v1, because he would always beat you in terms mm -hmm. of damage. So if he like, haunts in on a, on a Sven while Sven is stunned then all of his illusions do desolate damage and he just cuts right through his armor. That's probably why I bought Manta first, honestly. Just questions like that. Um, watch the game, see how he plays it, copy some of the things he does with the principles you learned today, and you can easily raise your MMR by like a thousand. And definitely work on your map vision, that's your biggest lacking, I think. That's the biggest thing holding you back, other than your lane understanding, because I think you'll, you'll get the lane understanding now, but really focus on your map vision. Just basically, while you're farming, just keep a general eye on the map, and if you see an enemy hero, just consider looking at them. If you see two heroes next to each other, especially an enemy and an ally, definitely look if you have Haunt. Because okay. you just need to see what's their HP level. Like, is my, does my line have Finger of Death and get this carry down to 200 HP and therefore me showing up at the perfect time is amazing. It's an auto kill. Exactly. That's the information you got to know. Um, sometimes it helps at the picking stage. Look at your heroes and be like, oh, I have a Nyx Assassin. He's going to probably start ganking at 6. So maybe I should keep an eye on where he is at 6. That way, no matter who he finds, we can always kill them. Because two heroes is almost always enough to kill one hero. Right, between his stun and, let's say he has a Dagon by 6, we should be able to kill him. Alright, there's no fucking way he's going to have a Dagon by 6. But well, hopefully he free farms <laughs> there's, it. There's no way, but <laughs> but uh, him being level 6 with his ult, his stun, and one mana burn, and your dagger, and two of your right clicks, you can kill any hero just about. Like, almost always a ganker hero, it just takes one more nuke, and it should be a kill on almost any hero, except for the tankiest ones, or somebody that has, like, an escape. Mm -hmm. So... Just gotta look at how the pieces fit together, and that is when you make a beautiful gank happen and accelerate your game more. So, all right, any more questions before I go? No, no, you've been amazing. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time out. Yeah, I definitely yeah. picked up uh, some good tips. Good, happy to hear that. If you have any more questions in the future, just feel free to send me a message on Skype. Uh, just yeah, small yeah, stuff I'm usually. Probably, but um, when I get back from Cali, I'm probably gonna hit you up again for uh, a Slark. Okay, that sounds or good. Something. Sounds great. All right, thanks for signing up. See you later. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, man. Bye. Later.